I recently got a new camera, the Nikon F2. It's a beautiful thing with a waist level viewfinder and I'm absolutely in love with the camera. But it's put me in a bit of an awkward position where I have one of these cameras that I don't really use anymore because I have better ones. There's a term for this kind of thing called gas, which means gear acquisition syndrome. It's where you keep acquiring more stuff, for example cameras in this situation, thinking it'll be the next big thing to help you take better images, but it ends up just being the same as everything else. And I think I'm in that position right now where I need to cut back and say goodbye to a lot of cameras and it's really gonna hurt because a lot of these cameras have emotional stories behind them, I'm personally attached to them. That sounds really fucking stupid, but there's time to sell some cameras and say some hard goodbyes. Starting off with probably the hardest goodbye is going to be the Practica BC1. I'm gonna miss this thing so much. I got this camera about a year ago and I instantly fell in love with it. I found it for £10 at an antique store and it instantly replaced my Pentax ME. While technically speaking, it's a downgrade for my Pentax, aesthetically, I love the camera. It has better shutter speed controls, I like the aesthetics and how it looks, and it comes with a good carry case. I definitely have better lenses for the Pentax, but I would much rather shoot a camera that I enjoy shooting with. It's the camera I give to friends when they want a camera to use because of how easy it is to use and the great images you can get from it. I've got plenty of 35mm cameras that I do use and don't use, and I know this one will quickly fall into that position where it just won't be touched for ages, so I'd rather it Went off to a better home than stayed with me. Sticking with the Practica family is the Practica L and the Practica Super TL. I've not actually used either of these cameras, mainly just to a lack of time, which is a shame that I'm saying goodbye to them already. The Practica L especially is such a beautiful looking camera, it's got a boxy body, a really nice shutter sound. The Practica Super TL is a bit more Eh, I don't really mind it too much. I wouldn't see myself using it over other cameras, but it still is nice. Both of these cameras take an M42 screw mount lens, which means they're compatible with amazing lenses like the Helios 44-2 or 44M. But I find myself mainly using those kind of lenses, converting them onto digital cameras. Because I don't see myself using these cameras in the foreseeable future, I don't just want them to be a shelf piece. They've got to go. Staying relevant with M42 screw mount lenses is the Zenit E. I really like Zenit cameras and I have a mini collection of them. One thing you find with a lot of Zenit cameras is that they tend to have shutter issues. However, this one is actually fine, but I also have the Zenit TTL, which in my opinion is a much more aesthetically beautiful camera, and I'd much rather shoot the TTL over the E. The Zenit TTL is a camera that I've used a few times that I do intend to keep, but I don't really need another Zenit if I've got one that's already working. Changing things up a bit is a camera I want to get rid of, but not until I've made a video on it. It's the Holger. This thing is garbage and it belongs in the bin, is what most people would say. The Holger has a very strong reputation behind it that it is a bad camera. It's a cheap plastic toy camera that is mainly used for lomography kind of purposes where you're experimenting. In my opinion, it's a very easy camera for someone to pick up and use if they've never shot medium format and I think it's a great entry level camera. There's definitely downsides, it's plastic lens, it's also plastic body, it can fall apart while shooting it. But to combat all of that, go back to the 1950s, Kodak were making the same kind of cameras with the Kodak Cresta, it's just a modern version. I have no issue with people wanting to pick up a kind of plastic camera that's easy to use to get into the medium of film. Next up is the Pentax SBO738. This is a point and shoot camera with quite a cool zoom lens that goes from 28mm all the way to 70 I do love a good point and shoot, my main one I use is the Olympus AF1 Super. The main thing about point and shoots is once you really have one good one you don't really need loads of other ones. I don't really know if I intend to sell this or just give it to one of my sisters or a friend, but I'm definitely not going to use it as much as somebody else, so I might as well get rid of it. Finally, on this list of cameras that I am selling is the Agfa Isolette. Now what you're looking at isn't actually the Agfa Isolette, it's the Zeiss Natar, but these cameras are borderline identical. I got both of these cameras in a massive bundle off of eBay, and the Zeiss Natar is definitely the better one. Zeiss is renowned for its quality in its lenses, while the Agfa Isoleti is clearly just kind of a clone of the camera. They are almost visually indistinguishable with the same kind of body and all the same kind of features. Still, the Agfa Isoleti is a very cool camera. I love these kind of fold out pocket cameras. It's crazy, you can put a medium format camera in your pocket. Kind of a few honorable mentions of stuff that I probably should be selling, but I'm a bit too attached to. We're gonna start with the Helena X35. This camera's shit. There's nothing else to say about it. It's a very small camera. It's probably the smallest 35mm camera I own. It is stiff. It is hard to use. I've only ever used it once, but I'm just so attached to it. It's so cute. It's a silly little camera, and I probably should get rid of it, but at the same time, 
I don't think it would sell, so I might as well keep it. Another honourable mention is definitely my box brownie collection. I've got quite a few now. If I was going to sell one, it would probably be either the Model D or the Flash 4. The Flash 4 is very beautiful, which is why I kind of want to keep it, but at the same time, the Model D was my first brownie, and I just have a lot of fond memories with this camera, so I'm kind of stuck in a position where I don't want to get rid of either of them. And finally, it's actually one of my first proper 35mm cameras is the Canon Rebel 2000. I haven't used this camera in ages because it's one of those cameras that takes silly batteries. I'm not willing to pay £15 for a battery that I'm going to use on a camera that I will only use occasionally. I have had a roll of film in this camera for the past year but because the batteries died I can't get it out so I don't know what I'm going to do about that. It is an expired roll of Lloyd's Pharmacy film so I don't really want to waste it and there's only like 10 shots left on it but I'm not willing to buy the batteries. This is just a quick video kind of telling myself I need to get rid of these cameras and holding myself accountable. I think everyone's camera collection is very personal to them and they do have a lot of memories. But I always think it's interesting hearing people's stories about their cameras. Anyway, thank you guys for watching. This has just been a quick video and I'll catch you next time. Matt out.